Hey, my name is Dr. Matt Bortz, and I'm the curator of the Division of Fossil Primates at the Duke Lemur Center. And today, I want to show you around this collection for Earth Day 50, or Earth Day 2020, or however you choose to celebrate. So the first question is, why is there a Division of Fossil Primates at the Duke Lemur Center? Lemurs, of course, are very active, very alive creatures that we study at the Duke Lemur Center all through non-invasive research. But then we also have this fossil collection that includes a lot of animals that are related to lemurs. And the reason we do that is because in order to really understand the modern ecosystems that lemurs are a part of, we have to understand where they came from in order to have effective conservation goals put in place so that we can help save some of the most endangered primates on planet Earth today. And so I want to introduce you to a couple of the characters who stay in the lab with me and also give you a little bit of a tour of the fossil collection, something that not a lot of people get to see because we don't have exhibits right now. All of these specimen cabinets behind me are filled with specimens, and each specimen has its own number. And scientists can check those out just like you can check out a library book. You can look up where in our catalog we keep each of these specimens and new discoveries can be made all the time. But for right now, the easiest way to show you what's going on is to give you this virtual tour. And in order to kind of organize ourselves and talk a lot about the history of Madagascar, I wanna start with a little bit of a modern ecological mystery. This terrifying looking object is called a trample burr. It has these huge spikes sticking out of it that help it grab onto things that walk by so that it can be carried around and ultimately moved around the landscape in Madagascar. This seed is in, from a plant that is only found on the island of Madagascar. And if you check it out, like it's huge. <laughs> it's like a giant, almost like medieval weapon. Like look, look at the spikes <laughs> on this thing. It is a nightmarish seed that is built for grabbing onto animals that help move it around. So this actually, in life, looks like a big old fruit that then dries out, lands on the ground, and waits for the right opportunity to grab onto something to carry it around. But there's a really big problem with this strategy for this seed. The biggest animal that lives in Madagascar today has a head that's that big. This is the skull of a lemur called an Indri. And Indris are very, very endangered lemurs, and they're the largest lemurs that live in Madagascar today. And they're among the biggest animals that are living on Madagascar, along with some tortoises that are also really big. And if you look at that, that seed is basically the size of the injury's head. So how did this seed, which is native to Madagascar, manage to get these huge spikes to help get, get carried around its ecosystem when the biggest thing probably couldn't carry it very far without noticing and then shaking the thing off? Well, the answer to that question makes us go into the fossil record of Madagascar. And that fossil record includes animals that are big enough to carry around the trample burr. So if you follow me over to this part of the collection, I'm going to show you some of the giant animals that might have been able to move that seed around during their time when they were still alive. This is the gigantic egg of a giant bird that once roamed the island of Madagascar. This bird is called an elephant bird. Right here is the egg of a chicken compared to the size of this giant egg from the elephant bird. This is the largest egg that's ever been discovered. The elephant bird is one of the heaviest birds that ever walked the earth. So the elephant bird is a giant animal that actually only went extinct a few centuries ago. We know this because the fossils of elephant birds were deposited so recently that they actually still have bone in them. They still have tissues that we can date using radiocarbon dating. And that, those dates tell us this animal was roaming the island of Madagascar in just the last couple of centuries. And this animal has only been extinct for not that long. There were people building castles, and then there were people building big sailing ships at the same time that giant elephant birds would have still been roaming the island. And so these animals would have been a really important part of their ecosystem. And one hypothesis is that the trample burr was actually able to hook itself onto the feet and feathers of these flightless birds and get carried around the landscape by these giant animals, unbeknownst to the birds. And after a while, they would shake them off or they brush off and drop the seeds. So that when the seeds landed, 
they wouldn't be competing with the parent plant. The parent plant is taking up all the shade and all the light and all the nutrients in one spot. The elephant bird would have been able to help that plant pick up its offspring and move those seeds far away so that it could keep reproducing and keep evolving on the island of Madagascar. So one candidate for moving around the giant trample burr might be the elephant bird, a giant bird that went extinct in Madagascar only a few centuries ago. But we also have a few other candidates of big animals that might be able to move the trample burr around. So with that, I want to introduce you to Megalatopus. Megalatopus means the giant primate. And this is one of the largest lemurs that ever walked the planet. We're going to bring in that chicken egg again to show you how big the skull of Megalatopus was. This is a huge lemur, an animal that only went extinct we think, about 500 years ago, maybe as recently as 300 years ago. So going back to the trample burr, we now have another candidate that might be carrying around this giant spiky seed, and it could be Megalatopus, this giant lemur that once lived on the island of Madagascar, probably eating a lot of leaves and fruit as it moved along the ground and through the forests and the trees of Madagascar. Living alongside Megalatopus were some other groups, including this called the monkey lemurs. One of the reasons this group is called the monkey lemurs is because unlike many lemurs that have these kind of long noses like this ruffed lemur does, Archaeolemur and its other monkey lemur relatives have very short faces and they have really big brains back here that look very monkey-like. And so here is the skull of a monkey this is called a capuchin. This is a South American monkey. And you can see how the skull of Archaeolemur looks a little bit more like this capuchin than like this roughed lemur. So this is an example of something that we've lost entirely that was once part of the ecosystem of Madagascar. And now I want to introduce you to one of the weirdest groups of lemurs that went extinct only a few centuries ago. These are called the sloth lemurs. When you look at the sloth lemurs, these are all animals that have very different sizes. This one is called Paleopropithecus. This is Babacotia, and this is Mesopropithecus. Each of these animals, you'll notice their eyes, they're just huge. It's like they're wearing goggles or something on their head. It's this kind of steampunk look that these creatures have going on. That forward-facing eyeball is something that we actually see in a couple of modern lemurs. This, again, is the skull of a modern Indri. Indries are closely related to Shafox, which also have these kind of forward-facing eyes. And so based on the skulls of these animals, paleontologists have determined that these sloth lemurs are closely related to animals like Shafox and Indries. But unlike Shafox and Indries, they are able to kind of hop around in this really acrobatic, really cool way. If you've seen the Shafox at the Duke Lemur Center, these animals probably wouldn't have been capable of because we know what their skeletons look like. So I'm gonna take you down the hall to see one of the most complete skeletons of a sloth lemur that was ever discovered. And it was discovered by a group of paleontologists working with the Duke Lemur Center. This is the skeleton of Paleopropithecus. And if you've ever seen a sloth, which is an animal that lives in South America and hangs from branches and kind of slowly moves through the trees in order to eat leaves, you probably can imagine what this animal was like when it was alive too. So those are some of the giant lemurs that were once living on the island of Madagascar. But those weren't the only giants that we've lost, the only kind of mega parts of Madagascar. Our final group of animals that went extinct pretty recently are the hippos. This is the skull of a pygmy hippopotamus. Today, there are no hippopotamus found on the island of Madagascar. But we find their bones, we find tons and tons of bones down here, we have a box of unsorted bones that we're still going through, giving them numbers and trying to identify how many individuals of hippos we're dealing with from some of the sites where these have been excavated. So this pygmy hippopotamus might be another candidate for something that could have carried around the trample burr as that seed was trying to find a way to move across the island and kind of get away from its parent plants, carried to new horizons and new places where it could try to grow. These animals only went extinct a few centuries ago. And that tells us that something a few centuries ago happened to cause their extinction. And one of the things that happened a couple of thousand years ago in Madagascar is humans arrived. 
And humans brought with them agriculture. They brought with them things like rice, and they brought things with them like cows and pigs. In order for things like rice and cows and pigs to be happy, they need a lot of open space. And so one of the things that it made sense for humans to do to make food for their families on the island of Madagascar was to cut into the forest where these animals might have been living and transform that forest into fields. Breaking up the forest and kind of creating these fragments, cutting into it, can be a big problem for big animals because big animals need a lot of space. And so if you're going to be a big creature that only has a few young through the course of your life, you need to be big and move through and get to new food as much as you can. If there are farmers that are cutting up the forest and kind of going in and creating smaller fragments within it, it gets harder and harder for big animals to find new places to get food. And so that might be part of what caused these creatures to go extinct. And so when we talk about the extinction of these animals, it's easy for us to think about, well, the solution to help conserve animals in Madagascar is for people to just not be part of the ecosystem. But the catch is the trample burr. It needs to hitch a ride on big animals. And big animals are things like cows and goats, and those are animals that are around people. And so it means that people actually have a role to play in helping to keep this plant alive on the island of Madagascar. One of the things that we're trying to figure out while working with farmers in Madagascar is how the farmers can both make their livelihood, can get food for their families, while also being participants in the ecosystem of Madagascar, maybe even fulfilling some of the ecological jobs that are left open by things like megalatopus, elephant birds, and pygmy hippos. Those mega animals have left a space for big animals like humans and big animals like cows to move in and help the ecosystem get along now that it's missing its giants. One of the most exciting things about being at the Duke Lemur Center is in one place, we have people who study things like extinction from hundreds of years ago, people like me who are paleontologists. I get to work alongside people like Lydia Green, who studies the lemurs out in the wild of Madagascar, trying to combine that ecosystem knowledge with what we have from the fossil record. Then what we learn can be communicated with people like James Herrera, who's a conservation biologist working in Madagascar. He has teamed up with people in Madagascar who are also trying to figure out how we can all live more sustainably alongside each other and alongside the animals that have to make a living next to us. And so with that, I wanna wish you a very happy Earth Day 50. And if you have any questions about some of the animals I talked about or the kinds of science that I do, please feel free to leave those questions in the comments and I'm gonna be paying attention and I will answer your questions. So with that, thank you so much and have a great Earth Day.